It's aeration day! Kids, it's aeration day! What's going on everybody? Chuck here and I hope that you are having a fantastic day today. It is aeration day. Boom! I don't know if you can really tell, but I'm excited about it. And I can't really put my finger on it. Why? There's just something about the big machine and run over the entire yard, tearing some stuff up, just sort of brings out the inner <laughs> but as a friend of mine and fellow content creator Jason says, I'm gonna link to his channel down below. Uh, he told me in a recent comment that it's not something, and I agree, by the way, it's not something that you really need to do every single year. I know there's this habit here in the lawn care community where we kind of get in this, well, I need to do this thing every single year. I need to do that thing every single year. And it's, with aeration, it's really, that's not the case. If you've been doing a fall renovation, fall lawn care program for many years now. You've constantly been aerating, maybe even throwing in some uh, some form of liquid aeration in there as well. Your lawn may be just fine the way it is and you don't need to spend the time or the money, the effort in aerating your lawn every single year. However, to each their own. If you want to, there's no harm in doing it. And having a healthy lawn will open up that soil naturally to where mechanical aeration may not be completely necessary every single year. So one thing I'm doing is, can't tell, I'm knocking down some of those higher spots in the lawn. Look at that, that's, I mean, that's the netting. Um, like I said, I'm not going for pristine level here. Just as I was scalping the lawn, you know, for this process, uh, you know, when I hit the blade was hitting bare dirt. Those are the areas I'm really focusing on because they're bad. Aeration is the process of allowing air, water, nutrients to penetrate down into the soil, down to the root zone, so it's actually more readily available for your turf grass. For mechanical aeration, there's actually two main methods. You have your core aerator, which removes a plug or a core from the soil. Then you have your spike aerator that actually pushes a spike down into the soil, thus making that same hole. Another benefit to aeration is actually the relief of compaction in the soil. Now here in East Tennessee, I say it all the time, we have the Tennessee red clay and it loves to get compacted. So I prefer to use a core aerator because it actually removes that plug out of the soil, thus removing that soil from the equation altogether, especially if you rake that, those cores up. Whereas if you use a spike aerator, it kind of just pushes the soil out of the way to make that same hole. It's so actually adding some compaction in that general area but you can do whatever you wanna do. Aeration is a very beneficial process. You don't need to do it all the time, but it is very beneficial for your turf grass, letting all that air, water, nutrients get down into the root zone. If you are gonna rent an aerator, and you see there's multiple versions, multiple, multiple models, multiple types of aerators at your local rental shop, get something like this. This is a Billy Goat. And I prefer this version uh, because this one, when the tines go down, they are straight up and down with the ground and they more pluck down in the ground and pull out a core. Whereas the other ones that I've rented in the past has a steel drum, not really a steel drum, but it's on a drum. And so they roll over the lawn. And so while they do go down into the ground, it's more like they dig down and then pop up the core. If it does tear it up a little bit, I don't care. But if you have a really nice lawn and you're doing a, you know, you're just doing your fall pro lawn program where you're aerating, overseeding, that kind of stuff, you don't want to tear up the lawn. I'd use this model last year, and this, in my opinion, this type does less damage uh, to turf than the steel drum. To get the most out of aerating your lawn, you want to go with at least two passes in a checkerboard pattern because according to Iowa State University, you're looking for 20 to 40 cores per square foot. That's actually quite a bit. I don't know if I actually hit that doing the minimum of two passes. I did go over it 
a couple times in areas I felt like needed a little bit more alleviation from compaction, but I don't think I hit the 20 to 30 course. Maybe I hit the 20 on the low end of that. I don't really know. We at least want to do two passes with the core aerator and a checkerboard pattern. Throw a third one in there if you're something like me doing a full renovation because the lawn is dead anyway. Go ahead and do another pass or two if you're feeling up for it because the more cores, the better. I am disappointed. Now, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, I'm pissed. Mm -hmm. I am royally pissed. So you saw it rained and it rained and it rained. It was hard, heavy rain for a while that finally let up a little bit, but you can kind of see it kind of just pushed mud and dirt around. And a lot of those holes I made with the aerator are now covered with dirt. Granted, it's not the same amount of dirt that it was previously because I removed all the cores, but it's still, it's like, you almost feel like, is it still gonna have the same benefit? The answer is yes, because I, it's like I said, it's not the same amount of dirt as it was before. So the holes aren't completely filled. They're more just coated and covered with some mud. But, um, so that's dirt and water. So it's not the end of the world. Even though things didn't really wrap up the way I wanted them to with this nicely aerated lawn, cores all cleaned up and put in other places, I'm still really happy that I got the process done because even though a lot of those holes are now covered in a nice sheen of mud, it's not like it's super compacted like it was before because a lot of that dirt has been removed and moved to other places. Uh, I could actually consider keeping the aerator for an extra day to maybe go over it again, but we actually have rain for the next three days, so there's really no point in aerating again. I won't get it done before topsoil is delivered, so I'm just gonna run with it, and you know, I think it will still end up okay. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Please like it if you haven't done so already, because it really means a lot to the growth of the channel and helping my channel be seen to a larger audience. Did you aerate this year? Comment below, how'd your aeration go? Do you have any tips for aeration? Uh, go ahead and share that with the community. Spread that knowledge that you have. If you haven't seen it already, I'm gonna start doing community posts on my channel, asking for any tips or tricks that you all have on a particular topic that I'm making a video on. Like I did one for aeration, which Jason actually was kind enough to give me a comment. If you do the same, I will go ahead and I may or may not use all the comments, but any comments that I do use, any tips and tricks I use, I will give proper credit in the video as you've already seen. So pay attention to those posts and share your knowledge because I wanna go ahead and grow this community with positivity, sharing knowledge, not holding anything for ourselves because we all want the same thing. We all want a really nice lawn. So anyway, I will see you all in the next video. Have a fantastic rest of your day and God bless.